If you're looking to continuously profile the code of your application, then this episode is for you. Welcome to Is It Observable? The main objective of Is It Observable is to provide tutorials on how to observe a given technology. Today's episode is part of the Kubernetes and Open Telemetry series, where we already covered several episodes the introduction to open telemetry, how to instrument your code, the value of the open telemetry operator, how to observe your Kubernetes cluster using the open telemetry collector, and more. Since KubeCon Valencia, continuous profiling is one of the signals that would be supported by open telemetry. Today's episode will focus on one of the open source solutions already providing continuous profiling, and I'm referring to Periscope. If you enjoy today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what you're going to learn out of this episode. We will start with an introduction explaining what is continuous profiling. We will then describe the solution Periscope. We will look at the open telemetry Periscope integration. We will look at the exported metrics and we will briefly explain the concept of agents running in a polling mode. We will have an interview with Ryan Perry, the co-founder of Pyroscope, and as usual, we will jump into a tutorial. As you all know, observability is the ability to receive different kind of data to be able to understand precisely a current situation. Today, when we refer to observability, we expect to see the following signals. Logs, the oldest signals that we have been generating from our code. Log is very powerful signal because we can manipulate the logs and expose metrics out of it. Metrics, of course, the metric need to be meaningful and expose the right context on the label or dimension of the metric. If we report the CPU usage, we clearly want to be able to split the CPU usage by server, by node, by pod, and so on. Traces, very popular signal, thanks to open telemetry, but tracing has always been out there, but in a property format. Events, systems like Kubernetes are generating lots of events. Reporting those events back to our solutions will be very meaningful to understand the situation. But in our CI-CD process, we also have lots of relevant events that can help us when we need to troubleshoot. For example, the deployment, uh, when the test has been executed, the version, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, continuous profiling. Yes, profiling is a critical signal that are going to be used quite a lot. We usually look at to trace and we clearly need to jump down into profiling to understand what is actually slowing down a giving transaction, a span. Profiling has always been out there and supporting by most of our traditional APM solution of the market. But the notion of profiling has significantly changed over the last few years. 15 years ago, Profiling was generating so much overrates on our applications, so we were limiting the profiling in dev environments. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. We were taking advantage of profiler in dev to understand what is consuming our CPU or our memory. Initially, our profiler would require us to start a recording to collect stack traces and memory dumps while we are interacting with our application. Once the recording stops, we can analyze the data recorded to point out potential issues in our code. Using this approach was very beneficial, but was time consuming, and it didn't provide any automated process. We had to manually analyze the data. And the most challenging part was to simulate the right action in our applications to get the right profile. You gotta be kidding me. In 2010, Google released a white paper called Google Wide Profiling, a continuous profiling infrastructure for data centers. So here is the link to that white paper. Google is showing the value of adding continuous profiling on our application directly in production. 
Good Genius Profiling was designed to resolve those pains by running it in production environments. Having it in production allows us to capture the right interactions to analyze the right stack trace over time. So it means that we are continuously collecting profiles out of the code. But how can we profile in production when we have so much overwrite? Well, first, the profilers are not recording everything. They are collecting samples every 10 seconds. And the systems only collect the stack trace that are really frequently called to focus on important things. We are dealing with less volumes and the recording capture the data slightly differently to reduce the overrate. Today's the overrate of the profilers are around 1% and sometimes less than 9%. The big advantage of continuous profiling is to be able to compare profiles over time. For example, we can even imagine adding continuous profiling in our CICD process. We will compare profiles and see if they are, have no regressions. If we want to take advantage of continuous profiling, first, we need to instrument our code by adding the profiler. The profiler needs to start at the init of our application. Then, we need a profiling storage that will receive all the profiles generated from our code. The profile's solution needs to be efficient because at the end of the day, it will deal with lots, lots, lots of data. Last, we need a profiling visualization tool helping us to analyze the data collected. Profiling has changed due to the work provided by the community and by engineers like Brendan Gregg, which introduced a new way of visualizing the profiling data, the flame graphs. Flame graph is a way of showing which part of the code are consuming most of the resources, CPU or memory or others. For example, you can see here we have the get product call and underneath we have all the calls generated by get product. We have the check product on one end and then we have the product response. With the flame graph, we can understand that we are spending around 50% in check product and product response and 60% of each functions are being consumed in the future flag product and the generate response method. So by optimizing both of those methods, we would be able to reduce the CPU time. Every language of the industry has their own set of profilers. So for Golang, we have pprof, for Ruby, we have rbspy, Python, we have pyspy, REST pprofs, uh, Ruby for REST, .NET, we have .NET Trace, PHP, PHP Spy, and so on. Those profiles need to be added in our code to profile the instructions of our program that are in fact sitting in the user space. But there's a technology today that can achieve profiling without the need of changing our code. It's eBPF. If you want to learn more about eBPF, check the introduction to eBPF. With eBPF profiling, we will load a probe in the kernel that will collect our code instructions. eBPF profiling is exciting because it could reduce even more the overrate of the profilers. Of course, we need to attach the right code interpreter to get the right code details out of the stack trace collected. When producing continuous profile, we have also the ability to attach to our profile a tag Tag is a great feature because we can assign a specific method function uh, to a specific profile. With a tag, we can then be able to filter the collected profile and find the right instructions related to our code. So here is an example on how to place a tag with pprof. Today, several solutions of the market include continuous profiling, but there are two open source solutions providing continuous profiling to our project. So we have Parka from Polar Signals and we have Pyroscope. Pyroscope is an open source solution providing continuous profiling on several languages Go, Java, PHP, Node.js, Ruby, P uh, Python, Rust, and kernel instructions with eBPF. What makes Pyroscope unique is the ability to ingest profile from the Pyroscope agents, but with any other type of profile of the market as well. 
out of continuous profiling features, Periscope also provides the ability to do ad hoc profiling, where you can upload a PPROF or JSON file or collapse format to visualize the profile in Periscope. Periscope provides a storage engine that will time aggregate the data in an efficient manner to keep details without utilizing too much storage. If you want to learn more on how Periscope store the data, check the storage engine design in their documentation. So here is the link. Periscope is combined of a server displaying the various profiles collected and the agents, the component that will be deployed close to our code to collect profiling data. Periscope can be installed in Linux, macOS, Docker, and of course, in Kubernetes. In case of Kubernetes, Periscope provides a hum chart, allowing you to add extra features to your standard deployment. But in the default Periscope deployment, we will have a Kubernetes deployment having one pod for the Periscope server that is designed to ingest profiles, provide a web UI to analyze the profiles, and a Prometheus endpoint. Yes, you heard a Prometheus endpoint. Side of the deployment, we will have a community service to expose and listen to the port, default port, which is 4040, um, to send the uh, profiles data and also open Periscope in a browser. And last, we will have a config map holding the Periscope configuration file. To get profiles in Periscope, you will need to deploy the Periscope agent. The easiest one would be, of course, the eVPF agent. Periscope provides one specific ham charge to deploy the Periscope eVPF agent. At the end, the Periscope eVPF agent will be deployed as a daemon set to deploy the eVPF probe on each node of our cluster. It will collect CPU time related to all the objects running in the node and add tags related to our Kubernetes objects. So we have tags like pod, node, namespace, container, and also extra labels like the Kubernetes version, the Kubernetes application name, and so on. If you're looking for a specific profiler for your own application code, you can also use the one provided by the Periscope agents. So Periscope provides agents for Go, Node.js, Python, and so on. There are two types of agents. Agents that will be attached to the library of your application or to the process of the application. That is the case for Java, where we load uh, Java jar files side to our application when the application starts. In .NET or PHP, it's gonna be similar. We have a Periscope execution file and the way we're going to launch the application is through the Periscope execution file. So, for example, in case of .NET, we will do Periscope exec, specify the spy name, so .NET spy, and the name of your app. There are agents that, where you need to adjust your code by adding a few lines of code at the init of your application. Like Go, for example, here we precise the name of the application, uh, the Periscope URL, where we want to send uh, the profiles, and we can also add tags as well. Similar to traditional profiler, Periscope agents allow us to add tag part of a code. For example, here we are executing slow code in a, a Periscope fu functions to attach a tag to it. When configuring your agents, you will always need to precise at minimal the application name and the Periscope URL. The application name is key because the data will be stored under the application name. Otherwise, the big value of Periscope is related to the web UI and the usage of tags. Periscope provides a query language similar to PromQL, named FlankQL, allowing us to filter profile based on tags. So here is the syntax. You can see that similar to Prometheus, instead of the metric name, we'll use the application name and then we will add the right filter based on tags. There are several operator possible to filter, so we either we can use equal or regular expressions, and then we have the opposite, so non-equal, and no, no match on that regular expression. The Periscope UI for continuous profiling is structured in several sections. The Tag Explorer shows us the distribution of profile for a given tag. It also shows us an average latency per tag and the standard deviations. The single view allows us 
to type of MQL and look precisely on a given profile. We can also have the options to add annotations to mark a given profile. You have also the comparison view where we type a flame QL and then we define two timelines and you compare those uh, profile and on two different times. The value is to compare profile when we see an increase of CPU time. Parisco provide a couple of in uh, integrations with existing observability solutions of the market. But there is a great integration that provides lots of value is the Pariscope Open Telemetry integration. One of the most efficient integrations that blowed my mind was the Open Telemetry integrations. Currently, this integration is only available for Go, Java, and Ruby. The concept is simple. Once the Pariscope agent is running, we have the ability to link the profiler to the trace provider used in our code. The value of the integration is to add extra span attributes on the span produced, linking the single view profile URL and the comparison view profile URL. With this integration, we can actually start troubleshooting by looking at the trace and then drill down to the code with the help of the link to the profiling data of a particular transaction, a span. How can we take advantage of this? Pariscope provides a Pariscope open telemetry library that we can use when we define our trace. Here is an example. As you can see, there is a hotel Pariscope where you can create a new trace provider linking the existing trace provider that you may have defined, so TP, and then you define all the settings. So the name of the application, uh, the URL of the Pariscope server, and then a couple of information about, yes, you want to add span name and span attributes and so on. So at the end, we attach the hotel SDK to the Pariscope library. So at the end, we do hotel set choice provider. And here we attach it to our Pariscope open telemetry library. Once the integration is enabled, the profile, we add extra tags on the generated profiles. We'll have profile underscore ID that equals to, in fact, the span ID. So we can help us to filter specific profile based on a span ID. Then we have the span name. So to filter a specific transaction name or span name in Pyroscope directly. Like mentioned as well, this integration will also add extra span attributes into our spans. So we'll have the Pyroscope profile ID. So that's the span ID. Uh, we have the Pro Pyroscope profile URL containing the URL to the flame graph in Pyroscope. We have the Pyroscope Profile Baseline URL that contains the URL to the baseline comparison view of Pyroscope. Pyroscope also provides a feature currently only available on the Pyroscope Cloud, tracing exemplars. This feature will be available soon on the open source version beginning of next year. Pyroscope provides a really cool feature the ability to export metrics out of the profiling agent. Currently, this feature requires to change the configuration of your Pyroscope server by adding a metric export rule. Metric export rules will generate Prometheus metrics collected from the Pyroscope agents and expose them on the Pyroscope server on the endpoint slash exported metric. To generate metrics, you need to precise a metric name and then how Pyroscope is going to retrieve the information. For example, here we want to create a metric called product catalog service underscore hotel demo by span CPU seconds total. We specify precise the expression where it's going to be the flame QL to get the profile and then we can filter to a specific node. So here in our case, we are fishing for total. And last, we add group by to be able to add extra labels in the top of the Prometheus metrics. By default, the Pyroscope agents are configured to push the profiles to the Pyroscope server. That is the reason why we need to specify the server address in our Pyroscope agent. But there is a way of changing this by enabling the polling mode. The polling mode will mean that it would be the Pyroscope server that will collect the profile on the agents. The polling mode 
requires to modify the configurations of Pyroscope by adding a scrap config. Crew Profiler supports the polling mode, where they will expose a port on the application to let Pyroscope collect the profile data. PProf would be the best example. Of course, you would need to enable the listener on your application to let the pull mode port accessible. The scrap config allows us to configure in a static way or in a dynamic way. Similar to Prometheus, static will require to precise the URL of the agents, the target. For example, so here we have a scrap config configuration file where we precise a specific job name similar to Prometheus. We enable specific profiles that we want to collect and then we speci specify the static config. So the application name, uh, the spy name and the target. The target will be the endpoint where it should connect to get the profile data. If you have several workloads configured in polling mode in your Kubernetes cluster, you have the options to set up a service discovery similar to Prometheus, where you need to add this following part in the Pyroscope uh, configuration. And we will need to add annotations to our deployment files to precise to the Pyroscope server that it needs to collect profile from those workload. So here is an example of the annotation that you need to add to your workload. In order to get more details related to Pyroscope, let's call the co-founder of Pyroscope Ryan Perry. Hi Ryan, how are you? What's up? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm very good. I'm very excited to have you on the call because I spent a week playing with Pyroscope and I have tons of questions. In this episode, I have introduced the concept of continuous profiling, described the various components of Pyroscope, how to produce profiling out of your code, and before jumping into my questions related to Pyroscope, could you introduce yourself to the community? All right. Well, uh, as uh, I guess you said, I'm Ryan, um, one of the co-founders of Pyroscope. Um, I have been in various roles in the software world for about, I guess, uh, like five years now. And um, yeah, the uh, I, I had done a lot of stuff related to observability, performance monitoring, and actually got the idea for Pyroscope at a previous company that I worked at with um, my co-founder, Dimitri. And, um, and yeah, we've been just, uh, we've, we've stayed friends throughout the whole time. And um, once we saw profiling uh, picking up steam in the past couple of years, uh, we decided to uh, kind of throw our hat in the ring with what we knew about performance monitoring and profiling in particular and uh, starting profiling uh, in Pyroscope that way. Behind each project, there is always a story. What is the story of Pyroscope? What did you name Pyro the project Pyroscope? Yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, we, we have, um, we built a very, uh, what I would call a hacky version of what has eventually become Pyroscope. Um, as, as I mentioned at that previous company that we worked at, and uh, basically, we, you know, we were able to see how uh, at the time we were just using RBSpy, the uh, open source version, and we kind of built some tooling around it um, in order to profile our Ruby application. And we saw how much time we saved in debugging, how much money we saved on how much we were spending on the cloud. There was a particular case where it was just like a one line change ended up saving us, I think it was like 30 percent. On our um, on our AWS bill, and we were you know obviously overjoyed that we were able to do that, and so um, you know that's kind of where we got the idea that this could be something that was a legitimate business and a legitimate you know project that we wanted to bring to the rest of the world, um, and why we decided to build an open source version and, and put it out. So as far as the name. Um, as anyone who's ever named anything knows, it is uh, not an easy task. Uh, we definitely took a uh, an engineer's approach. We wrote a script that checks GitHub and uh, you know domain names and Twitter and everything. And but we really wanted to combine the idea of flame graphs, and so that's where the pyro and pyroscope came from. And then the ability to really like zoom in is what we added on to existing profiling tooling. Um, you know, looking in at particular time periods or particular tags. And so we kind of got the scope aspect from being able to kind of, you know, like a telescope or a microscope, being able to zoom in. 
You combine the two and you get Pyroscope. I have used Pyroscope and I really enjoyed it using it. I really see lots of use cases to improve our automation. I'm pretty sure that you are currently working on lots of new features. Could you share some product updates? What will happen soon in Pyroscope? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, excited that uh, that you're finding it, uh, you know, a good experience using it. You know, something that we definitely try to optimize for. Um, but yeah, as far as, you know, we've been thinking a lot as we're going into 2023 um what we want to focus on and so I, one of the big things about having an open source project is that you get a lot of feedback from people and they start using your tooling in ways that you never expected and so one of the things that emerged over this past year that we saw a lot of people getting really into was using profiling in their testing pipelines their ci cd pipelines and so one of the things that we are going to be releasing at the beginning of next year is a, the ability to basically yeah add, add profiling to your testing suites and understand sort of how resources are being used there. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, we, towards the, a couple months ago, released our cloud product as well. And as part of that, we released the ability to do tracing exemplars. So basically getting a uh, profile per span in your traces. And as of right now, that's only available in the cloud version just because it was easier to build due to some constraints. But uh, we've found a way to basically introduce that into the open source version and plan on releasing that as well at the beginning of next year. Um, and that's kind of a good segue into like what, what one of our big focuses is, is going to be in that we find that there's a lot of people who want to use Pyroscope alongside their other tooling, um, you know, their their broader observability suites. And so one of the big focuses that we have is on integrations. And, um, you know, so on the open source side, we already um, have the option available in Jaeger to visualize traces as flame graphs. Um, but uh, integrating deeper into tracing products like Jaeger um, as well as Grafana, we already have a Grafana plugin, but there's been a lot of um, increased interest in us, um, you know, improving our Grafana plugin and also bringing that tracing exemplars feature to Grafana as well. Um, and then on the closed source side, we've uh, had a already had a, a great relationship with Honeycomb um, and an integration with integrating with that. Um, more recently, we added support for uh, Datadog's open source uh, .NET uh, agent, and uh, a lot of people have been using that. And so we're we're just getting deeper into the uh, integrations with various other other products. And then, um, last but not least, is eBPF, which is obviously very um, exciting, and a lot of developments being made there. And so we have a lot of improvements planned for our eBPF agent. Uh, uh, particularly as it relates to dealing with symbols over this uh, coming year. You mentioned testing and bringing Pyroscope part of a CI-CD process. Are you planning to add testing tags when we run our tests, meaning that we will be able to generate profiles related to our tests and have specific tags where we can filter and be able to compare uh, the profiles under the, on various tests. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's even just a, a small part of it. I mean, it, it extends even you know further than that. So obviously, yeah, being able to um, get a, you know, for each test suite run, for example, you know, being able to get both the high level profile, but then also being able to break it out by, um, you know, by test, by folder, um, you know, being able to compare being able to see, uh, you know, sort of where your resources are going, you know, that's that's a um, notoriously hard part of running your test suite, you know, something runs out of memory or something, you know, it's just consuming too much resources. And uh, we'll allow you to see that break it out by branch by, you know, comparing your PR to master or main, um, comparing your, uh, you know, yeah, basically, uh, as, as many dimensions as we can being able to compare different tests, as well as being able to see your test suite over time, you know, a year ago it might have taken you know five minutes to run. Now it's taking fifteen. You know, where did where is that time going? You know, what's the difference? And being able to see where that those changes were introduced is something that um, we've already seen people trying to kind of put it together in various ways and has given us some ideas on how we can uh, make that more native to to Pyroscope so that it's it's easier to use. 
um, yeah, GitHub Actions as well, you know, making it so that it, it integrates well with GitHub Actions or with GitLab, um, you know, those kinds of things. Do you have a way to extract out of Pyroscope using an API? Let's say I want to extract profile using FlameQL or even query to extract a comparison of two profiles or even get diffs. Yeah, so we do have, um, it is possible as of now, I would say like up to this point, a lot more of our API focus has been on uploading profiles actually rather than retrieving them. So a lot of people are using other um, various tools, uh, various profilers out there. And, and we built Pyroscope in a way where it's uh, profiler agnostic, language agnostic. You can uh, send data in the right format via our API and be able to you know store it that way. Um, we do have, uh, so how the, the Jaeger integration works or the Honeycomb integration, um, the Grafana uh, plugin does work via an API where the dimensions we have at this point are relatively simple. Um, you know, time, uh, tags or labels um, are, are really just the main ones. And, uh, but yeah, we do have all that available via API, but we're trying to, um, as you said, make that more of a, uh, you know, uh, yeah, kind of promote that more and and uh, promote those use cases more and show people how they can use the API, not just to upload data, but also to retrieve data. Um, you know, a, an example that we saw recently was someone wanted to get a um, diff profile in their PR, like in a PR message and have it, you know, sort of like export and be able to do that. And so things like that are, are things that we're going to make easier in Pyroscope uh, coming up soon in the next year. I already briefly mentioned FlameQL. I really like it, especially if you're used to run PromQL in Grafana. The onboarding is very simple and allows us to easily filter the right profile. I thought that it would be awesome to also not only filter, but also get analytics using FlameQL. For example, I would like to extract the memory usage of a given node of a profile. Have you already thought about this feature? Yeah, so FlameQL is definitely heavily inspired by PromQL. Um, you know, we, we really wanted to add, have the ability to query uh, and, you know, query your data in any format, uh, you know, flexibly in any in any way that you wanted but at the same time we didn't want to like introduce a whole new query language that you have to learn uh you know it takes a little bit of, a little bit of time to get used to um you know any query language and so we definitely uh, have plans to improve flameql add some more functionality so that there's kind of parity there um it's already pretty close but there's a couple other things we want to add in there um and also yeah you know making a simplified interface so that more people you know without necessarily having to go like deep into the language itself are able to make the same queries that they want to make um so those are two things as far as what you're saying with the uh with the metrics piece and being able to sort of um uh, uh, uh point out a, a specific node and and see how that changes over time and something along those lines that's something that we did add support for, but as we've sort of re-architected um, Pyroscope, we are um, kind of reorganizing how we do that. And so that also is something that we're going to, um, you know, as part of that integrations piece that I mentioned, make uh, possible to be able to do that more easily and be able to track different functions or um, groups of functions. Uh, you know, everything's a, a tree and a flame graph. So being able to kind of understand um, you know, whichever whichever piece you want as, as high up the tree or as far down as you want, being able to really um, understand that is, is something we're definitely looking into. I really like the open telemetry integration. I thought it was very useful to get the link of the profile on the span attributes. For the moment, this integration is limited to few languages, so Go, Ruby, and Java. Are you planning to extend it to more languages? Yeah, so um, yeah, so that integration, the key piece of that is being able to dynamically tag or label your um, your profiles. And um, that's, you know, in some languages easier than others. And so, yeah, so we definitely, um, as you mentioned, have it for um, Go, Ruby, and Java already. Um, we're pretty close with um, Python.net and Rust are probably the next ones that we will add. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we've seen that to be, that was also something that we didn't expect when we first started Pyroscope, but that we saw um, as we dog fooded it ourselves, how useful it is to really be able to, you know, you kind of get a, a broader view with tracing, for example, and you're able to see, um, you know, what, what you're sort of uh, across, um, you know, various microservices happening, but being able to see for a specific span, you know, why this part of code was, you know, consuming whatever resources it was, um, is, is incredibly useful. So we definitely plan to expand that into the other languages, as well as making it easier to um, consume that data and analyze that data um, in the Pyroscope UI and our other integrations, like I mentioned, um, our other plugins and those sorts of things. Since KubeCon Valencia, profiling is the new signal of open telemetry. I know that you are part of the working group. Could you share some updates? When can we expect the first release of open telemetry profile? Yeah, um, yeah, I can give you, well, I'll, I'll give you the update first and then our, our optimistic view on, on how we hope the, uh, the next year, or what we're thinking as we think towards the next year. So yeah, I mean, we, we came up with our first um, OTEP, um, our proposal to just um, basically just condense a lot of the various um, you know, ideas and where we want to eventually go with profiling. And we put that out. The community had like really great response to it. People were, um, you know, really excited about this becoming an official symbol. And then now we are in the uh, sort of implementation phase on what does that actually look like? How do we, um, you know, make it consistent with uh, now logs, metrics, and traces, um, which have already, you know, are further along on their um, on their hotel journeys. And, um, and yeah, and so we've, we've started to really um, boil it down into um, what the format of a profile needs to have. Um, and now what we are focusing on um, at the beginning of next year, we're gonna be meeting with some of the other SIGs um, in the hotel world, um, particularly the collector SIG and seeing how do we make this, um, you know, something that is again, consistent with how the collector treats other signals. Um, and I think we're pretty close there. Um, the, the tr there's a couple of tricky pieces that we're trying to figure out, but we've got a lot of good, um, you know, a lot of good uh, participation from various organizations who are doing things around profiling, open source projects, um, vendors and end users are all involved in these conversations. And so I think we're doing a great job of kind of um, keeping all the, the varying interests in balance as we, as we make progress there. My last question is related to configuration. I had the chance to play with OPAMP protocol and with the solution biplane, configuring collectors. And I see lots of value to configure our telemetry agents, collectors, and OTL SDK. When playing with Pyroscope, I immediately thought that it would be awesome to have an OPAMP support on Pyroscope agents to adjust the profile on the fly. Have you already thought about adding OPM clients in our agents? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that we've been thinking about. We have not made a ton of progress on it. I think we're still kind of, I mean, yeah, it's definitely something that's newer and something that we're, um, it definitely adds a little bit or a level of complexity that we have to make sure we do it the right way. But uh, we are seeing more and more demand for that use case. Um, you know, some of the forks of Pyroscope even have like, or Pyroscope's agents have built, um, you know, varying versions of, of exactly what you're talking about, being able to um, kind of dynamically control things and, and that kind of thing. And so we're definitely, um, yeah, we're definitely kind of learning more about it as time goes on and seeing how others are finding ways to implement it successfully. And I could definitely see um, by the end of next year, us having a way to, us having kind of an integration there to being able to, to use that to be more, uh, you know, just to be more flexible with, with your agents as there are a lot of, uh, I mean, maybe not even necessarily a lot, but some, some key levers that you can pull in different directions that will control um, you know, how much is going across the wire, how much is happening on the agent side, you know, there's a lot that you can control and, and different organizations have different needs. And so we don't want to, you know, sort of force one way of doing things and would love to add something like uh, Opium that can make it a little bit more flexible. Thanks Ryan for your time. And thanks for having me. It was a real pleasure to have you on the show. It is in fact, almost Christmas, even if this episode will be released after. So Merry uh -huh. Christmas to you and your family. Thank you. 
and to you as well. And I hope to see yeah, you soon. Yeah, yeah. If uh, not before, at least maybe by uh, KubeCon the next one. Sure. Definitely. Right. See you there. All right. Bye. In this tutorial, we will use Pyroscope with the Open Telemetry demo application. It will be the perfect example to utilize Pyroscope with Pyroscope UVF agents, the Pyroscope Go agents, the .NET agents, Node.js, Python, Java, Ruby. In all the language supporting the Open Telemetry integration, we will also add the Open Telemetry integrations in the top of our Pyroscope agents. I will show you how to add the Pyroscope agent and how to see meaningful information in Pyroscope. We'll see how to link traces to profiling. So for this tutorial, we will need a couple of requirements. We will need, as usual, a Kubernetes cluster. We will deploy the Open Telemetry operator that will require the cert manager. We will deploy the LGNX ingress controller to expose our applications and also a Pyroscope. We will send our traces and metrics produced to Danatrace. So we will need also a Danatrace tenant. We will adjust our collector pipeline to send the temperature data to Danatrace. We will deploy the open telemetry demo application that has been modified, including the Pyroscope agents. We will deploy the Pyroscope server. And last, we will deploy the Pyroscope ABPF agent. Like every tutorials that we deliver at Easy Observable, there is always a GitHub repository. So here we're looking at the repository related to Periscope, of course. So for this, I'm not going to deploy everything. Uh, in fact, I already have done it. So I'm just going to remind you a few of those requirements that you need to apply. But what is important is uh, you. Uh, there is a script uh, that will help you to deploy uh, all the environment, uh, including Pyroscope and the uh, Pyroscope eBPF agents. But here <clears throat> you need a few information, so name, you can name whatever you want. And then you need the Dynatrace URL and the Dynatrace token. So if you click on Dynatrace trial here, you will uh, get to the trial page. So you can start a trial if you don't have any Dynatrace tenants, of course. And if you do, use your, your Dynatrace tenant. But what is, what is important is we need uh, to have um, a data ingest token uh, to ingest traces and metrics. In order to do that, you will have to go to your tenant. And in the tenants, you have an option to say uh, access token. So on the access token here, uh, make sure uh, to generate a new token. And I already have done it, so I'm, I'm not going to create it. But uh, you will have to search for the scope ingest. And in ingest, you will see metrics and traces. So make sure to click on both of them, give a name generate and once you, the token has been generated you will have the value so make sure to copy it because uh, it will be only visible once uh, so then you can use it for the for the script so once you have that uh, you will have to uh, set here the dynatrace url so the dynatrace url is going to be this piece without the slash so make sure to copy this piece uh, without the last slash um, and this will be basically used for uh, in the scripts to replace uh, the various files uh, that are in this repository. Once you have this, uh, you will see uh, if we open a command line, a couple of things we will see here. So I've slightly uh, changed this environment in my case because I'm using Bitepline and uh, as a daemon set collector. But in your case, you will use the open telemetry daemon set. But if you look at the namespace, you'll see that uh, you will uh, you will obviously have a Pyroscope namespace, uh, the hotel demo uh, namespace with our application, the open telemetry operator system, which is the technical um, namespace for the open telemetry operator. You will also have the cert manager because it's required uh, for, to use it for the with uh, the operator. Uh, and, uh, and then you will have, of course, the ingress Nginx. If you look at the default uh, namespace, if they are the part in the default namespace, uh, you will see that uh, we have, uh, in my case, you won't have that. So I have removed the Prometheus stack in your case. So don't, don't, don't pay attention to this. What is important is that you have a, a daemon set. So one part per node with the Periscope EVPF agent 
running. We have the Periscope server uh, that basically has everything. And in fact, uh, you should have also an ingress rule. So if I do ingress, you also have an ingress rule. In my case, this is the, my ingress to, uh, to access Periscope out of this cluster. Now, if you look at the uh, pods running in the hotel demo namespace, uh, you will have all the pods of the latest version of the uh, hotel uh, open temperature demo application. So uh, different uh, pods with different language covering most of the language of open telemetry. So all of those pods are producing spans in, in, in open telemetry metrics as well. Um, as you can see, we have two pods running because we have one for the collector, uh, Sycar, and one for the app. Except of the uh, here Redis that doesn't have it. So technically, what is going on is this: uh, the pod is producing telemetry data locally, and then the uh, collector is pushing it to the default namespace, where you will have, in your case, a collector um, that will basically uh, forward the, the traces and metrics to the entries. So in the uh, repository that I have, I have several things that are included in this repo. First things, uh, I have the community's uh, folder holds uh, our deployment file. So here it's the deployment file, modified deployment files because I have modified a couple of those uh, um, containers. So you see here, it's, uh, you can see that the image here, it's pointing to uh, uh, my own uh, Docker, Docker Hub uh, repo. And, um, and here I have a Pyroscope modified version. So a few of those services has been instrumented. And by instrumented, I mean, I have included the Pyroscope agent. So let me show you what you should see in terms of code. So first, uh, in like as you know, in Pyroscope, in the Yotel demo applications, there are several languages covered. So there are a few examples. So as you can see here, I have a, a Go example, for example, for the accounting service. Uh, so first, you can see on the uh, on, on if we open that file, first I have imported the uh, the, the library related to a Pyroscope. Uh, here it is. You can see that I have the client, and in the case of Go, I also included the uh, hotel integration. So this is going to be an example to show you uh, how you uh, configure that. So in the main Go here, in this accounting service. A uh, few things is uh, required. So first, uh, in the Go, of course, I have uh, imported uh, the Pyroscope um, agent. Uh, and also, I have uh, the Pyroscope hotel uh, open telemetry integration. Uh, so uh, those two uh, objects will have to be initialized. So if you look at the uh, first domain, so where I'm starting to uh, define and initialize the uh, Pyroscope um, a server and the Periscope uh, uh, agent. First, what you can see here, I am have an environment, the environment that includes to pass the Periscope URL. And then here I'm starting, uh, I'm using the Periscope start um, uh, methods to uh, assign a specific application name. I passing the uh, server address, and then I'm, I'm defining which type of profile I want to enable uh, within this uh, in, in this uh, in this Periscope agent, also I have some static uh, static tag, so the host name, um, and uh, depending on on where those uh, pods are running, in my case there will be only one pod. Uh, so that's is required to at least uh, just run Periscope without the open image integration. So it's basically starting the profiler. Then, because here I'm using open telemetry. Uh, I have a specific init trace provider functions in this code. And what I'm doing here, I have uh, the default uh, code provided by the community for open telemetry. But here, what you can see, I have a defining a new trace provider. And inside of that, I'm defining the hotel. So the open telemetry API sets the uh, trace provider. And you can see here, I'm passing the Periscope object, like explained, where I'm passing the uh, existent trace provider in Periscope, where here I'm defining again the name, the server, uh, and what type of um, information I want to uh, include um, in the spans um, 
uh, and also add a tag in, in, the, in the profiles generated by Presco. Now, if we look at uh, other uh, language, uh, for example, here it's Java. Uh, for Java, the, the good news is that I, you don't need to touch your code. So the only thing that I did here is to modify the Docker file. So here in the Docker file, you can see that I'm passing a few information, the Periscope format, the, Periscope format, the profiler, uh, the application name, uh, the Periscope server URL, uh, and the, here I'm adding the hotel Java extensions to pass the right uh, jar files for Periscope uh, integrations with Java, and same thing for uh, the Java tool. So at the end, uh, by only adding this, it will basically attach the Periscope agents and the open terms integrations to the Java service. On other services like, for example, uh, .NET, same thing. In .NET, I use the same approach, where here, uh, in the opposite, like explained, uh, I don't need to include the jar files. I have a specific uh, Periscope uh, command line or execution file to use. So in this uh, specific uh, um, in here, in this uh, this in Docker file here, I'm basically getting these .exe files, and once I have uh, collected that .exe files, I am using to start the application Periscope exec, uh, specifying the .NET Spy agent and the name and uh, the application name. So basically, I'm running the application with this Periscope uh, service. Here. I have a Periscope, so like I explained in uh, the section, you have uh, two sections, so continuous profiling, ad hoc profiling. So here, ad hoc is where you import your, your uh, profiling files. But here, uh, let's jump with the Tag Explorer. So here, because of this, I have uh, the various services that I have uh, instrumented. So the recommendation service, uh, the pro product catalog, email services, checkout, cart, ad services, accounting, and payment. And you can see that uh, there are several profiles enabled for each of those languages. So here in email, there is less. Um, and you have also the, uh, for few of them, uh, the one, of course, supporting uh, the open, open telemetry integration. So Ruby, Go, and Java. You have the uh, integ integration enabled. So what do you get out of that? Let's have a look at, so at the end, uh, the Tag Explorer show you the various tags. So let me show you one that has some tags and defined. So let's say product catalog. And I want to use, for example, I, I can look at the block use or uh, the uh, demo go routines and the mutex durations. But I want to use first the CPU time. So I'm going to select the CPU. And as you can see here, I have two tags. So it says uh, I have two uh, tag available. Uh, and it's, it's basically show me the average uh, CPU time and the standard deviations and the total. So if I want here, I can obviously select, I have a host name here. Um, so we have two host names selected, but I can also say, I want to look at the span name. So if I click at span name, I can see uh, the similar distribution, but by span, so list of products and get products. Get product is obviously the, the one that is more important. So if I select it, then I will be able to see the profile related to that. So that's the, the Tag Explorer. And then if you jump to the single view, uh, single view, same same thing. I can select a tag like that way, or I could also have you can done a flame QL by selecting the, um, by constructing here the flame QL. That, was, that is also uh, possible. So here at the end, uh, in these last three hours or last, uh, let's say 30 minutes, I can see all the profile collected. And I can select one specific time. For example, this one is, seems very interesting. I can add annotation if I need it. And I can see the, obviously the, the actual uh, profile generated from, uh, for this, uh, this um, um, span, uh, the get product. So here you can see that I have the main, so I can select one of the nodes, the main. And here I would see here that, for example, get a check product failure takes, uh, uh, let's say, 30%. Uh, so I can see where we're spending much time and where we could basically optimize uh, the code on you know, itself. Same thing for Corporation View. And the difference with Corporation View is like, you can select two timelines. So here it's the same, uh, but I can say that on this section here, I would be interested to look at this spike here. And on this one, I would be like to look at this one. So to see, to be able to compare and see why do we have so much differences between both of them uh, and where you speak, you can see and look at the table view or from a flame graph perspective as well.
And last diffs, <clears throat> so we take the flame, the same one, and it will show you, uh, as, expect, as explained, the, the differences. The one has been removed, removed and the new one. Uh, so it's very efficient to, uh, to understand where you're spending time. Here in Dynatrace, first of all, I'm sending all the traces, so I see all the services ready to be yeah, hotel demo applications. So let's click at the product catalog. So product catalog, I know that the integration is enabled with open telemetry. So I'm going to select uh, the get product catalog that took uh, see this one to 12 milliseconds. And here I would be able to see the distribute trace related to this one. So we can see that we have some get flags and error. But what is interesting here is the get product has some information. And we can see that we have the PowerScope profile URL here. We have the profile uh, uh, diff URL. We have the span ID here. See, it's the, it's the same thing as the span ID, like I explained. And then we can see the profile, the single view uh, profile URL. So at the end, it's really convenient uh, to do that, to be able to easily uh, uh, jump to the profile if we want it. Uh, so here, uh, this is, I thought, was very really useful. That's it for today's episode related to Periscope and Continuous Profiling. As you can see, Continuous Profiling is a very, very powerful signal of observability because we can basically point out directly the code that we need to optimize. Periscope is a great solution and very promising providing already a couple of great features. I really like the open telemetry integrations, and also I like the fact that FlameQL, similar to PromQL, allow us to easily uh, query and filter our profile. Unfortunately, I was not able to produce Prometheus metrics today from Periscope, but I'm pretty sure and eager to see it in the future, because also I see lots of great features of extracting irrelevant metrics from a specific node of our profile, like the CPU usage or the memory usage, and then we can export it back to uh, specific dashboards. So if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode.